So let's go and understand basic loops in Python. For those of you, uh, for those of you who know what a loop is, for those of you who have seen something like a while loop in C, C++ or Java, you'll 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 remember uh, and you'll see that the while loop in Python is very very similar to the while loop in C, C++ or Java, except for some small syntactical changes. Intuitively or logically, it's the same thing. For those of you who, have, who don't know what a while loop is, imagine if you have a bunch of code. Let's assume these four lines of code that you want to run over and over again, which means you want to run them and again, you want to go up here again, run them again, go up here and run. If you want to run something over and over again or iteratively as it's called, then we use loops. Very simple loop is the for loop. Sorry, is the while loop. We also, we'll also see the for loop. So let, let's go, let's go and see some examples to understand why for loops are important. So the syntax, uh, the syntax is very, very simple. So we have the while, while is a while is a keyword in Python, and we have the text expression with a, with a column just like our if. Uh, this this is something unique to Python. This column. So whenever the text expression is true, the body of the while loop will be executed, and all of it is indented. Just to remind you, indentation. Try and do four spaces in indentation. That's a good programming habit. Okay. So, but remember, this body will only run when the text expression is true let's see an example so that so that um, there, there is also a flowchart here for those of you who like to see flowcharts but i always prefer examples typically so let's go let's go let's go through a, a simple example let's assume i have a list I'll, I'll execute this step by step okay suppose i have a list lst which has five elements this is element zero element one two three and four i want to find the product of all of these numbers how do i do it so I'll declare a variable called product and assign it a value of one and I'll call, I'll create a variable index with a value of zero. If to multiply this, what if, I mean, let's think about the logic. What if I multiply product with 10, right? I'll get some value. I'll get 10 here. The 10, if I multiply with 20, that which I, if I multiply with 30 and so on and so forth. So if I have to write it more mathematically, can I write it like this? Can I write it like one multiplied by, okay, list of zero multiplied by list of one multiplied by list of two, so on, so forth till list of four, right? Th th this will give me the product of all the numbers, right? You might ask, why are you putting one here? Okay, even if you don't put one here, um, it's okay. So, but intuitively this is what you're doing but what we'll do is we'll multiply it with one because multiplying it with one doesn't change the value so here you're doing the same operation of multiplication multiple times all right you're repeating that operation or you're iterating and doing the same operation over and over so let's see how to write some simple code for that okay so let's let's look at it so first okay your your interpreter went here it went here it went here then it comes here now what is the value of index value of index is zero what is the length of list? Five, because there are five elements here. Is zero less than five? Yes. So this is called the test condition, right? This is true. So as soon as it's true, it will go inside the while loop. So what's there inside the while loop? So since this is true, it will say product multiplied equal to list of index. What is index? Index is zero. What is list of zero? List of zero is the zeroth element in the list, which is 10. So product multiplied equal to 10, which means now what happens? Now your product becomes 10 because star equal to is nothing but product equals to product into 10, right? Now what happens? Now this line also will be executed. Index plus equals to one, which means what will happen to index now? Index right now is zero. So index will become one. Now as soon as index has become one now, so your, your, your uh, interpreter actually went inside, it ran this, it ran this. Now this is over. Immediately it will go back and evaluate the, evaluate. it will go back to the first line. Okay, this is what iteration is. Okay, now what happens? What is the value of index? One. Is one less than five? Because that's the condition we have to check, right? This is your test condition, right? Yes, it is less. So it will go inside. Now product multiplied equal to list index. What is the value of index now? Index is one. So list of index is 20. So now product has a value of 10. So 10 star equal to 20. What will that be? Which will make product equals to 10 into 20, which is 200. Now index will now increase by one. It's called incrementing. 
okay this is called incrementing or increasing it by one so now index will become two it will keep now again 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 your loop will go back to the first line it will keep doing it till so let's assume my index becomes five because i'm i'm increasing my index with every iteration right imagine index becomes five at one point right then what happens this condition fails when will that fail when your product has multiplied with all the numbers till four uh, till 50 that's what i meant till list four right then what happens is because this test condition has failed right it will not go inside it will not go inside anymore it will directly come and try to execute this next line this next line is empty so it will come here and execute this so it will print the value of the product okay so let's just execute it and see what happens so this is how loops work in in most programming languages okay i'm just trying to get this to okay so now i have it okay your product is this suppose if i if i just change it just to show you that i can cook it up okay the numbers are changing okay and this this is the product of 10 20 30 40 60 right so this is how a while loop looks like and this is what while loop does internally uh, in most programming languages and but this is how it does it in python for sure as we saw now unlike other languages um, there is a, there is an interesting part here now what happens if i have a while loop just like if else i can also put an else for while what happens is whenever this condition fails this else part will run this else block will run whenever this condition uh, whenever this condition fails right so for example in this condition in this what i'm doing here is i'm just printing the numbers in my list called numbers okay so let, let's try to execute it first okay let's see if it runs properly okay so if i just say i'm just changing it slightly so what it's doing it's basically saying okay if you look at the code of course with time you'll get used to looking at loops and understanding it immediately so index basically tells me which index i should be at right now my index less than length my length is five again just like the previous case right index is zero print the number so it will print one two three four five at some point index will become five because you're incrementing index here right index will become five now when it becomes five what happens is there will be no more items left right because this condition has failed five is not less than equal to five at some point okay after it has print all the numbers right then what it does is interesting then it goes and runs whatever is there in the else block before going out of it okay there is one catch that often happens a lot of times people forget to do this uh, to do this part it's one of the biggest reasons if you forget it what happens if you forget it this, this is a very interesting thing For, suppose if i forget to print this if i forget this line then i'll remove it and show it to you by the way programmatically then your index is never getting increased is never getting incremented right your which means this loop will keep running this loop will keep running this loop will keep running such a loop is called an infinite loop so if you have a program with infinite loop it will be impossible for you to get out of it so it will never stop executing so let's see an example let's let's run this by removing this line i'm removing this line here okay just to show you saved it when i run it it's continuously running see this star symbol here it's running 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 it's printing so this star symbol here shows that the program is still running okay of course we, we need to we need to kill it of course now so what i'll just do is i'll i'll interrupt okay which means I'm, I'm going to say stop this okay see how many values it has printed it has printed like because it's continuously doing that it's printed all these values so always remember never ever forget to 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 increment whatever is being iterated on so index is called the iteration variable because you're iterating on that you're using it to check and if you don't increment it you're you're in big trouble if you forget this line this will keep running infinite times to the time you block it or you stop it explicitly okay okay having said that let's go and see a more real worldish example so imagine if i want to find if i want to write a simple program to check whether a given number is prime or not okay so let, let, let's see let's see how to uh, let's see how to do it it's 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 very very simple and straightforward okay first let's run this code so that we know what's happening okay let's see 
let me just quickly run this let's enter a number let's assume i enter 19 okay it says 19 is a prime number here all right let me just highlight that okay it says 19 is a prime number which is good so what if what if i enter a different value okay let me rerun it again if i enter let's say 16 now it tells me that 16 is not a prime number and it's telling me all the values that 16 is divisible by 16 is divisible by 2, 4, 8. Just as a quick recap, for those of you who forgot what a prime number is, prime number is a number which is divisible by itself and 1 and no other number. Right? So how do we check it? We basically divide a given number by every number between 2 to n minus 1, given the number is n. Right? So let, let's say, let's see. So here I'm just saying, okay, this is your standard input output, right? I just say enter a number. And whatever number is entered here, I'm converting it into integer because real values being being prime is, is ridiculous. It's only it's only integers which can be prime or not. Right. So, so my number is the number that I've input. My num variable has the number that I'm that I've physically input, as you saw a while ago. I'm creating a Boolean variable called e is divisible. This value will turn to true whenever, suppose my number is 19. What I'll do here is I'll check whether 2 can divide it, whether 3 can divide it, whether 4 can divide it, 5 can divide it, so on, so forth, till 18 can divide it. If any of these numbers can divide it, of course, 19 will always be divisible by 1 and itself. If any other number can divide 19, so 19 is inside my num, right? Okay, so if any of these numbers can divide it, I'll change is divisible to true. Now, at the end, I'll say if it is okay let's look at the code right so before we go and see the loop let's see what it is so at the end i'm saying if e is divisible which means if e is divisible is true then say it's not a prime number if e is divisible is false print that it's a prime number okay so intuitively what am i doing if you have number is 19 if your num is 19 i'm taking all the values from 2 so on so forth 17 18 and if any of these numbers can divide it can divide 19 and have a reminder which is which is zero then 19 is divisible by all these numbers right so we are so here what we have to do we have to divide 19 by each of these numbers as soon as you have to do something repeatedly you have to think okay i have to use loops right so i have given a variable i as 2 which means my i is here now my i has a value of 2 and while i is less than num my num is 19 right which means my i this loop will run and here i am saying i equals to i plus 1 at the end of this loop this this whole block is my loop right if you think about it so by looking at these two years you can easily say that this loop will run from i equals to 2 since i'm incrementing it next time what happens i becomes 3 next time i becomes 4 so on so forth till i 18 as soon as i becomes 19 this condition will fail right so by just looking at the condition and how the variable is incremented you can say what the loop will run through it will run from i equals to 2 right i equals to 3, i equals to 4, so on and so forth, i equals to 17 and i equals to 18. Okay, now what are we doing inside this loop? So we understood the iteration part of it, right? Where is it starting? We know it's starting at 2. We know when it will end. We know what all numbers in between will be, will, will be iterated through. Now what I'm saying here is, if num percentile i, percentage is a symbol which I think we discussed earlier, uh, which gives us the reminder when number is divided by i. So for example, for 19, 19 percentile 2 is when I divide 19 by 2, what is the reminder? The reminder is 1 because 2 9s are 18 and the reminder is 1. So this gives us the reminder. If the reminder is 0, okay, if the reminder is 0, so for example, if my number is 18, 18 percentile 2 is, is 0 because 2 9s are exactly 18 and the reminder is 0. So this is, you can think of it as a reminder operator. A numerical reminder okay when you divide number with i or num with i now when that is zero you know that your num is divisible by i which means as soon as you see it you say oh yes you change the e is divisible by true and you print that okay so and so number is divisible by my i as soon as you have it true even if one number other than one and the number itself if any other number can divide it you say it's not a prime Exactly, that's what is happening. So it will keep running it. At the end of it, if my e is divisible is true, right? Then if it is true, which means there was some number between 
between 2 and n minus 1 or num minus 1 that could divide it and hence I say it's not a prime number. Otherwise, okay, if no number could divide it, I'll say it's a prime number. Very simple code. I strongly recommend you, you folks go through this in more detail and understand what's happening and try this. I mean, since all these IPython notebooks are at your disposal, I strongly recommend you try play with it, right? So we'll see, we'll see other types of loops and other constructs within, within, within loops uh, in, uh, in the next videos.